Be more compassionate. It seems to be a phrase that's being thrown around in the NHS quite a lot at the moment. It's quite easy to do, right? Not really in my opinion. Um, as individuals and leaders, we're kind of told to be like this, told to be like that. We go on lots of training courses, but as soon as we go back into the workplace and those stressful events happen, compassion and things like that go out the window, right? Um, we feel like all that stuff we've learned in that training program or what people have been telling us, we can't really put into practice. But what if I told you there was a skill that you can develop yourselves and in your teams that can help you act and lead with more compassion? It can help your teams foster psychological safety and actually it's been proven to be incredibly good for your well-being. So I'm going to talk to you about something today called psychological flexibility. So what is psychological flexibility, first of all? It's the ability to stay in contact with the present moment, even when we're experiencing unhelpful thoughts, feelings, or bodily sensations, but being able to choose behaviors that are in line with our values and the situation. Some of you might actually know about psychological flexibility, because we use it as part of something called acceptance and commitment therapy, which is a therapeutic type of training that we do with our service users. But as an organizational psychologist, we've discovered that actually we can use those skills that we teach in that, that therapeutic training and put them into the workplace. And the research behind it is really, really strong. It shows that you're less likely to be burnt out you're actually able to be more compassionate. You don't suffer from as much compassion fatigue, which I'm sure we're all aware of working in the health, health industry. And it helps teams kind of foster cohesion. So I'm gonna walk you through something today that can really help you sort of start your journey on building your psychological flexibility. This is called the matrix. It's a really simple process that you can use on yourself and with your teams. And before we walk through this, one of the main things about psychological flexibility is noticing, but with kindness and curiosity and in a non-judgmental way. We all have unhelpful thoughts. I'm having them right now, but they're there for a reason. They serve a purpose. They serve a short-term purpose to kind of alleviate what's going on in the moment. But with psychological flexibility, we want to move away from those thoughts and towards our values to actually serve us the long-term gains that we want to see. So my challenge to you is to think about a really challenging time coming up into the, in the workplace in the next week. We've all got them. Here are some examples. What about giving this presentation? What about that really challenging meeting you've got to go to? What about a challenging service user? What about a challenging member of staff that you've got to deal with? Okay, so once we've started, started to think about this, we're going to walk through how we build psychological flexibility in ourselves. So in the top left-hand corner of the quadrant, we need to think about what our personal values are. When was the last time you actually thought about your personal values? It doesn't really happen that often. But one I've mentioned today might be compassion. And a really important thing to think about here is a personal value is something you want to act on, not feel. So some of those might be compassion, some of it might be support, love, kindness. You know, in those situations, we want to be compassionate towards our service users, our members of staff, our family. And then we move down into the bottom left of the quadrant. And these are where we're looking at our away move. So what's taking us away from our personal values in, these, in this challenging situation? And we need to think about those unhelpful thoughts, right? So what unhelpful thoughts appear? What about feeling like an imposter? I'm having that quite a lot as we speak. What about feeling really nervous, anxious, those really unhelpful thoughts of kind of, what am I gonna do? What's gonna happen? Are they actually gonna listen? And then we move into the bottom right hand corner of the quadrant. And this is about looking and understanding and noticing what behaviors arise from those unhelpful thoughts. So what do we do when we start feeling like an imposter, maybe when we're in this situation? Do we start getting defensive? Do we eat loads of biscuits just to relieve that? 
I was doing that yesterday while practicing this talk. Do we just switch off? Do we distance ourselves from people or the, or, or the task at hand? This is all about noticing with kindness and curiosity because we do this for a reason. But while we work through the act matrix, you'll notice that these things are taking us away from our personal values. And once we get into the top right-hand corner, we're looking at our towards moves. And this is thinking about those actions that you can take as an individual, or if you wanna do this with your teams as well, that's gonna move you towards your personal values. So let's say for instance, we're looking at a personal value of compassion. What actions can we actually take in this difficult situation to move towards that personal value? Maybe we could ask people simply how they are. Maybe as leaders and individuals, we're too busy all the time that we're constantly in a reactive mode and we're always trying to fix things. Why not make some space for yourself? How many people at the start of the week looked at their diary and their calendar and went, I'm literally in back-to-back -back meetings all week or I'm dealing with many things. Where's the space for you? Where's the space for your teams? Now, with the Act Matrix, it's a journey. It's a really difficult thing, actually looking at ourselves. And those small actions can really make a difference. So I've just led you through a really simple tool that I want you to go away and use. And I want you to kind of try it out with yourself at first, maybe with your teams if you feel secure about it. And let me know how you get on. Psychological flexibility is a really important skill, um, especially in the 21st century of work, which is really complex. It's really, really hard out there, especially in healthcare. It's a complicated time to be working here. But I do believe that actually, if we want to be the leaders we say we want to be, all the individuals in the workplace we want to be, we need to have a skill like this that enables us to lead with our values. So my challenge to you is to go out there, try the tool, see what happens, and give me some feedback, because actually, unless we develop it and do it together, we won't get anywhere. Thank you very much.